I couldn't find the cadaver that I had opened up all the vessels on last year. I think it might have actually um, moved and been exchanged. So um, I'm going to draw out the arteries and the veins that supply the gut. Okay, so the, the first thing, and you need to be able to draw these, by the way, for the exam. So the first thing is that there are two different kinds of arterial supplies in the body. Right, the first is that we have a cable system. cable system is a system in which there are paired arteries, a right and a left, okay, coming off of the aorta. So let's take the renal arteries for example. How many renal arteries are there? Two. There's a right and left, it's cable. How many iliac arteries are there? Two. There's a right and left. Okay, you get that. Okay, so these are paired. So cable are paired? Cable are paired. Then we have the portal system. When we talk about the portal system in general, we're talking about the arteries and the veins. So in the portal system, these arteries are unpaired. Okay? And all of these unpaired arteries supply the three different guts. Okay? So how many celiac trunks are there? One. How many SMAs are there? One. The IMAs are there. One. Okay. That's coming straight off of the aorta, there's only one. So each one of those arteries supplies a different embryological gut. The celiac trunk supplies the foregut. The superior mesenteric artery supplies the mid gut. And the inferior mesenteric artery supplies the hind gut. This is the aorta and the iliac arteries, common iliac arteries. The celiac trunk is located here. The SMA is located here. And the IMA is located here, generally speaking. All right. The celiac trunk has, what's I, what, has what I call the, the Mercedes sign. So, Mercedes sign looks like this. Okay. The Mercedes sign from the celiac trunk is here. You have an artery that goes up, a squiggly artery that goes over here, and an artery goes that way. You see the Mercedes sign? Okay. The nub in the middle itself is the celiac trunk. All right. Now, sometimes you can get an artery there, but in most cases, it's just a nub. All right. So the three arteries off the celiac trunk are the left gastric, the splenic artery, and the common, yeah, common hepatic artery. Okay. So all right. Any questions so far? No. Okay. So. The splenic artery goes to the spleen. The whole. Okay. The left gastric artery is going to come around and supply the stomach. So, left gastric artery comes around this way, goes to the lesser curve of the stomach. Just like that. So, now let's go back to the common hepatic artery. The common hepatic artery has a branch that goes up and a branch that comes down. Like this. The branch that goes up is the proper hepatic artery. It splits into a left hepatic artery and a right hepatic artery. Turns out on both on the two cadavers, you're not going to see either one of those. Then, off the proper hepatic artery or the right hepatic artery, I'm just going to draw it off the proper because that's more common. There's another artery that goes to the gallbladder, and that's the cystic artery. So here's our gallbladder. Here's the liver. Everybody good so far? 
The branch that goes down <coughs> is called the gut bless you. It's called the gastroduodenal artery. And it goes behind the head of the pancreas. So let me draw the pancreas right here. There's the head of the pancreas. The tail of the pancreas goes all the way to the spleen. Okay. What's that one? The one that's coming down? This one? Yeah. Gastroduodenal artery. Okay. Yeah. Electronic artery. Typically behind the pancreas. Although the one we had, one of the bodies had, is it's going in front. <laughs> so I'll explain that in a second. Okay, off the gastroduodenal artery, um, we get a branch that goes to the lesser curve, and that is the right gastric artery. Okay. Right gastric artery. So the right gastric artery meets the left gastric artery at the left, at the um, lesser curve of the stomach. And then also off the gastroduodenal, this artery continues on as the gastro-mental um, artery, or gastro artery, I don't know, on the greater curve of the stomach. So where is the left gastro-mental artery? That came off of the splenic, comes down this way, this. Off the splenic. Okay, now there's two other important arteries from here that you're not going to see, but it's super important, super important because they go to the head of the pancreas. So off of the gastroduodenal artery, we have what's called the pancreatic duodenal artery, and there's two of them. They go like this. So pancreatic duodenal artery. There's a. These are the superior pancreatic duodenal arteries. There's an anterior and a posterior. Just know they're there. You're not going to see them. So yeah. both of those are superior? Both are superior. That's right. And even inferior got to come from somewhere, right? Off of the GDA. Off of the GDA. That's correct. Okay, so that's celiac trunk. Any questions? What's SPD again? Superior pancreatic or duodenal artery, which you're not going to see. Okay, and what is that coming off of? The gastroduodenal. Okay, mid-gut. So mid-gut, we're gonna supply the branches to, of the mid-gut, all right? So the SMA is a huge artery. It comes down like this. And the SMA branches, we're still, we're gonna go to the jejunum first. So we're just gonna send a jejunal branch, jejunal, jejunal artery, easy. Then we're gonna send one down to the ileum. Guess what that's gonna be called? Ileal artery, okay? And then we're gonna send one over here to the ileum and the cecum. So what do you think that one's gonna be called? Ileal cecal. Ileal cecal artery. Simple, right? Okay, before I go on, the jejunal artery and the ileal artery aren't actually one branch. There's a ton of branches. Go like this. Okay. So you'll see that in the body. Basically just this group is the jejunal artery. This group is the ileal artery based on its approximate target. After the ileocolic artery, it branches into a um, cecal part and an ileal part. You probably won't see that. That's okay. All right. Then off the SMA, we have the right colic artery. Going up, we have the middle colic artery. Uh, yeah, C-O-L-I-C, no colic artery. And then if we had a superior pancreatic or duodenal, we have to have an inferior pancreatic or duodenal. So it goes up this way. Okay. Yeah, again, you're not gonna see that artery. And then the last thing on this is that the colic arteries are connected. They're anastomosing together via the marginal artery of Drummond. So we have a line that goes like this. And there, and we'll we'll get to that in a second. Okay, so this is the marginal artery, Drummond. Is that an anastomosis between all superior and inferior branches, or just the? 
just the colic ones. Can you just show me that marginal arterial what? Marginal artery of Drummond. Okay, any questions on SM? What is the MCA for? Middle colic. Iliocolic, ret colic, middle colic. And well, we haven't finished the hindgut yet, right? So let's go to the hindgut. So the hindgut has the inferior mesenteric artery, which looks like this. Okay. The inferior mesenteric artery will continue on as a superior rectal artery. And that'll become an important artery in a second. It gives a branch to the left colon. So I'll just draw it up here, going up this way. That's the left colic artery. And it gives a branch to the sigmoid. It's going over here. And well, I guess it's superior rectal artery. Correct, superior rectal artery. LCA. Um, left colic artery. Colic. Colic, referring to colon. Oh, yeah, so I interchange those names all the time. Okay. <laughs> it's actually both. Okay. So, so it's iliocecal, Okay, now I'm missing an artery. The marginal artery of Drummond ended here, but it actually continues on. And guess what? It connects the LCA and the sigmoid. Okay. So the reason why that's important is because this region right here on the colon is a watershed area on that uh, left colic flexure. That means you don't have a direct supply there. You just have an arterial supply from the SMA and the IMA, but no true artery that goes to that region. Okay. All right, questions on that? IMA signal. Okay, so now, yes. Yeah. This is the circle for the watershed, the same spot. So it, the watershed area is where it doesn't get a direct blood supply, but it gets a blood supply from these two branches, right? So it also means it's, it's super susceptible to ischemia. Okay, so why do we mention all this? So all of these arteries supply the gut, which means the blood, the deoxygenated blood from the gut has to drain into something. And it drains into the portal venous system. So this is the portal arterial system. And all this blood goes in the portal venous system. All the blood going into the cable system drains into the same named veins that the arterial supply went into. Okay, no big deal. You go to the left kidney, right? Via the left renal vein, you're gonna drain out, sorry, the left renal artery, you're gonna drain out the left renal vein. Okay, but we don't have that in the gut because these arteries are impaired. So we have what's called the portal system. It looks like this. So these veins are enormous. Okay? They look like this, and they form a K. This vein here is the portal vein. It's going into the liver. Remember the liver over here? Like that. Okay. That's the portal vein. Just as an aside, the portal triad includes the portal vein, right? the proper hepatic artery, which remember came from over here, right? and the cystic duct, the, the, sorry, I should say the common bile duct. Common bile duct, okay? I don't have three colors, so. Bile, vein, vein, artery. Okay, so back to the portal system. The portal vein is named because it receives three tributaries. The first is the superior mesenteric vein. So the superior mesenteric vein must drain which gut? Mid gut, what, superior. What does that say right above that? Oh, this one? Yeah. Oh, it's supposed to be common bile duct, CBD. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the superior mesenteric vein drains the mid gut. The splenic vein, splenic vein, drains the foregut. And then the hindgut is drained by the inferior mesenteric vein. All right. So that's pretty simple. 
one little quirk is that this portal system can also look like this. Okay, two different K's in the English language. <laughs> two different portal systems. So this one is, what one again? This one is? This one is? This one is? Super easy, right? Okay, now here's where this is important. There are no valves in the portal system, portal venous system. The only other place for veins in the body where there are no valves is the head. Okay. So all these, all these veins are draining blood into the liver. Flow, very passive, very slow, going up into the liver. What happens if the liver gets blocked? Where's all that blood gonna go? Yeah, everywhere we're in the reverse direction, okay? So one of the places it will go is down to the rectum, very commonplace. So blood will come back down this way, down this way, and it'll go into the superior rectal vein. Okay. Now the superior rectal vein came from the, from the rectum like this, but remember it's a huge vein. It's huge, okay, like that. The rectum also receives cable blood supply and all, that means it receives, it drains cable veins. So it has two on either side because they're paired. Okay. Middle rectal vein, inferior rectal vein on both sides. What is key here is that these veins are super small. Okay, they're teensy weensy. So if I've got this massive um, tube that meets these two tiny little tubes on one side, okay? That means if I've got blood pouring down this way, I'm gonna pool blood in this region. That's internal hemorrhoids, okay? Another common place where this happens is via the, um, uh, the, portal, the portal vein, um, which drains into the esophagus. So you have esophageal veins here, which are cable esophageal veins, and branches of the left gastric vein, right? And this here is esophageal varices, right? So you get this, the pooling of blood in this region. In that case, a person vomits blood. Those are the two common places. There's another one, Kappa Pedusa, cool to look at, not very common. Okay. Yeah? Just for clarification, the, once the superior mesenteric vein Correct. It's not the portal until all three of those veins come together. Any questions? No? Yes. So it sounds like the left collar flexure um, is prone to ischemia just because of the large head area. Yep. Is the same true for the right collar flexure? Uh, no, because the right collar flexure receives the, um, there is a true artery here, uh, between the right, the right colic artery sends branches this way, but you don't get the same thing here with the left colic artery. So the only you and so multiple blood supplies, marginal drumming, right colic. Over here, you only really have one. So, yeah. Does Kappa do you say if it goes through the IMV or the SMV? SM, it will go through the SMV. Yeah. So the umbilical veins. I can drum in. So the umbilical veins. Here's my belly button. Right. You have umbilical veins that come from the um, epigastrics, and they anastomos with branches from the SMB. Captain Medusa is nasty. You said that for the esophagus, um, the, the cavity veins. The cable veins are esophageal. Cable veins, so if blood pools there, then you'll vomit blood? Okay, so that was a lot of orientation. The actual what you see in the cadaver really isn't that much. So we're ready to go in? Okay, let's go. Thanks, Michelle.